Today we are going to start a new topic called concentration inequalities. We saw independence, notion of independence, how to use it in hashing last time. Uh, we have a completely new topic and it relates to what we have done before obviously. So if you remember, we found this aggregate quantity called expectation for a random variable x. At that time, I told you that you have to remember what this quantity represents. If you still remember, it basically says that if we repeat the experiment for x multiple times, so there is an experiment related to x, uh, every time you do the experiment, some value of x will come out. If we repeat this experiment for x multiple times, then the average value of x approaches to a of x. This was the meaning given to the expectation of x. So we repeat the experiment, then the average value of x in this multiple times as n tends to infinity, the average value will tend to e of x. So concentration equalities are a way to formalize this. What do we mean? How proofs do they approach? What number of experiments we have to done? All these kind of things we will see today. There is another way to look at the same thing, which would be that uh, in this case, if we are given the expectation of a random variable, uh, we could have more aggregate quantities. One of them, which we will see today, is called the variance. So given these aggregate quantities, what can we say about the distribution of x? Can we say something harm about where x lies? What kind of properties does it satisfy? The first such quantity we will study is called Markov's inequality. The statement is not very difficult, even the proof is not difficult. So let's just motivate ourselves. So suppose I am given a random variable which lies between 0 and 1. And you are given that the expected value of x is equal to half. So can we say that x does not take value 1? So the expected value of x is half. Can we say with certainty that x does not take value 1? Some amount of thought will show that this is completely incorrect. There are many random variables which take value 1 with some probability and still the expectation could be half. What about x can't take the value, value 1 with probability more than half? With probability more than half. Is this correct? So I give it as an exercise to prove that this is indeed correct. If the value of x lies between 0 and 1 and expected value of x is half, then x cannot take value 1 with probability more than half. If it does, then there will be something wrong with the calculation of expectation. Pause the video. Even if you can't prove it, the next theorem will prove it probably. So Markov's equality says, if x is positive, that means it only takes positive values, and we are given some a greater than 0, then probability that x is bigger than a is bounded by expected value of x divided by a. So you see that the expected value of x tells us how big x can be under some conditions. So you have to remember that x is a positive random variable here. Then only we can apply this equality, inequality. The proof is not going to be difficult. As suggested in the previous exercise, we just have to look at the calculation for expectation. 
So what is the calculation for expectation? It is summation over all values which x can take probability that x is equal to x multiplied by x. And now I can divide it into two cases. Summation x less than a plus summation x more than a. Now we use some of the properties of x. First is that x is always positive. That's why this quantity will be bigger than probability is always bigger and the small x will always be positive because capital X is a positive random variable. So this is what I get. And now notice that x is greater than a. This is probability of z equal to x. So this shows that <coughs> This quantity summation x is than a x equal to x is nothing but probability. So this implies that probability x greater than a is less than expected value of x divided by a. So we did the calculation, but the intuition was pretty simple. Let me put it in one word. The probability x greater than a, if this quantity is very big, then the contribution itself of this quantity will be bigger than the expectation. So this will contribute more than E of x in the calculation of E of x. That is the contribution. So a simple inequality, simple proof. Let's change uh, the term the aggregate quantity slightly and see if we can write more inequalities. So it starts with limitation of one force inequality. The expectation tells you something about the random variable but not a lot. Consider a random variable which is zero with probability one. Another, another random variable which takes value two with probability half, minus two with probability half, Take another random variable which takes value 1000 with probability half, minus 1000 with probability half. Or take a random variable which takes this value with probability half like this. You will realize that expectation of all of these quantities is zero. But their behavior is pretty different. In one case, the value goes close to zero, like this, but you see that expectation does not tell you how far away you can be for the expected value. So, in one experiment, you can be very, very far away from E of x. So, that's why we define this quantity called variance. And it basically measures how much x varies from ex. Okay, there is going to be a scalar, there is not going to be a random variable. We want to quantify how much x is away from ex. So the intuition would be that the variance should be very very low here and very very high in this case. Variance, how, how should we be able to define? Your first guess might be to look at the random variable x minus ex. And you want to see how far away it is from zero. So your first guess could be, let's just take expectation of this random variable itself. This will tell us how far away we are from expectation. But again, some thought shows that here, the contributions might cancel. So if x is more than ex by a big amount and if x is smaller than ex by a big amount, they can cancel. So this quantity should in some sense always be positive. This suggests 
that we should look at this expectation. So mod of x minus ex measures how far away we are from ex and penalizes both. Even if we are positively away from ex, we are more than ex or if we are much smaller than ex. In both cases, this expectation is penalized or in the sense it's higher. The only problem here is that the absolute value function is not a very nice function, it is not continuous and so on. So the quantity we actually measure is very similar, but just square of this. So the variance is defined as the expectation of x minus ex whole square. How far away x is from ex, we notice that and square it to keep it positive. We can simplify this expression to make a simple formula for variance of x. Just expand it as e plus b whole square. This becomes 2x ex minus expectation of x whole square. So notice this is expectation of x whole square. So the first quantity by the union of expectation is expected value of x square minus 2. Now it's a tricky but actually a trivial question. What is expected value of x times ex? Remember ex is a constant. It is same throughout my random experiment. So expectation of x could be taken out. And then I have another value. Minus, similarly, expectation of x whole square is also a constant. So it stays the same under expectation. This was a plus. So the entire thing gives us expectation of x square minus expectation of x whole square. This is known as the variance of x. You notice that we squared the quantity. So sometimes taking a square root of this quantity is considered better. This is called the standard deviation and is generally represented by sigma. Sigma of x is nothing but the variance of x. Substituting the formula, this is square root of e to the x square minus e of x whole square. And this is called the variance. Let's take a small example. What is the standard deviation of Bernoulli random variable? You remember what a Bernoulli random variable is? It's just a coin toss where we get a head with probability p or we get value 1 with probability p and 0 with probability 1 minus p. So we just have to calculate these two quantities. Expectation of x square you can see that will come out to be p. You can calculate it yourself. And expectation of x was p. So expectation of x square will become p square. So the sigma for the Bernoulli random variable is square root of p1 minus p. This suggests a simple exercise, which again you should think about. When is this? maximum. When I say when, I mean and for what p. For what value of p, for what kind of coin, the standard deviation is the max. And you have to check that does it agree with your intuition. Do you remember how we define variance and similarly standard deviation? So does it make sense that for that p, this variance or standard deviation should be higher? We will just see one more inequality and finish this lecture. That is called Chelsea's inequality. It is pretty simple. And we just apply Markov's inequality to a different random variable, which is x minus e of x say square or, or this, it doesn't matter. So we have seen that capital X, alpha X, X plus Y, X plus A, all these are random variables. 
So now call this as a new random variable x minus e of x, e x is a constant, x minus e of x whole square. Even this is a random variable. So by Markov's inequality, probability that y is less than a is bounded by, it should be y is greater than a is bounded by expected value of y by a. And now substituting y to be this quantity, we will get Chebyshev's inequality, which says probability of x minus ax greater than or equal to a. So we are very far away from ax that is bounded by variance of x divided by a square. So So whatever be x, remember y is always a positive random variable. So we can apply Markov's inequality. And this will give this. A complete proof is an assignment. So we saw two very basic inequalities today. These will help us to give law of large numbers, chain of bounds, things which are known to formalize the concept what is expected. Again, expectation is the value which you should get to take the average of many repetitions of x. And this we will formalize 